Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this satsang with Sri Muji. It's another special day to be in Muji Baba's presence, but most especially here at Papaji Satsang Bhavan. So I'm very happy to greet everyone, and all those joining from home also, a big welcome. A few practical announcements. And first, just to say that we are filming today, and so by being here, it means that you're agreeing that your image and voice will be recorded and might be used for the sharing of satsang in DVD or YouTubes or podcasts. So we just wanted to make everyone aware of this. And a couple of practical things to come through. Um, first of all, about ride sharing. We wanted you to know that we put a notice up in the office in the entry area for those of you who might want to offer a ride or share a ride to whatever your next destination is. So if you're looking for a ride, you can please add your name to the list in the office. And next about the satsang hall here. Uh, the satsang hall will be open in between the satsangs except for from 2 o'clock. From 2 o'clock to 2.30, we'll ask everyone to leave the hall so that it can be tidied up. And we ask everyone to please take your things with you and uh, no saving seats or anything like this. And the satsang hall will reopen at 2.30 for the satsang, which begins at 3 o'clock, the afternoon satsang. And we're asked, please, no food, no open cups in this room, strictly water in a bottle, so, and uh, yes, there are two toilets here, but they'll be closed during the satsang, and if, uh, it's, it's very good if there's very little movement in the room, so we ask you to please stay where you are unless you absolutely have to leave the room, in which case you'll find a sign to, there's one toilet down the hall here. And the satsang bhavan is offering um, lunch and dinner today 
and it's upstairs on the roof. Very lovely food. And if you're interested in that, we ask you to please ask at the desk. They can tell you more. And if you need drinking water, there's some in the library, just on the other side of the lobby here. There's a small room, and there's some drinking water there, if you need. You might have noticed there's a shop off the lobby here. This is Papaji's shop, and you can find books and photographs in, in the shop here. All of the proceeds go to help sustain this beautiful satsang bhavan. And in fact, your donations are most welcome, and they also all go to help support the, the sustaining and maintenance of the satsang bhavan, which as you can see is just taking in, taken care of with such love and beauty all these years. So your donations are very much appreciated. And there's a box, I believe, now in the entry area and uh, possibly also in the shop. And we ask everyone to please switch your phones all the way off, not on vibrate. It does interfere with the audio system if they're left on vibrate. Okay, so I'm watching as people come in the hall here, and they're just walking right in front of the camera. The camera, I want everyone to be aware of it, that when you, when you come in, if you can duck below the camera, because it's blocking the view of all the people joining from home, and also from the recording, so to please be aware of that. We also want to ask everybody on the floor to move a little bit closer together, because there's still people entering, and um, you can just come straight up a bit closer together. Thank you very much for that. And finally, before satsang today, after Muji Baba arrives, there will be an arti. Arti is a fire ceremony. It's a traditional form of worship, and it's done every day here at Satsang Bhavan. But we'll do it together with Muji Baba today to honor Papaji. And Muji Baba will be with us shortly. Thank you. Om 
Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivardana Orvarukamiva Bandanan Ritur Mukshiya Mamrita
चाने में दूर करे ओम जय जगदीश हरे बोले सदगुरु श्री पापा जी महाराज की जय सदगुरु श्री रमा महर्षि की जय अरुणाचल शिवा की जय मुंजी जी की जय शंकर भगवान की जय माँ भवानी की जय राधा किश बलदाऊ जी की जय जगदम्बा मैया की जय वैष्णो माता की जय भारत माता की जय तुलसी माता की जय आज के आनंद की जय सभी भक्तों की जय सभी संतों की जय 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 श्री सात गुरु देव जय जय श्री सात गुरु देव जय जय श्री सात गुरु देव ओ शांति शांति Great Master, let our hearts be worthy to sit at your feet and uh, inside your heart. Be pleased with our visit here, our head at your feet. Oh, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. Oh, Namaste, <coughs> welcome everyone to Satsang this morning and the very uh, happy to see you. Hope you rested well yesterday, last night. And uh, just before I um, ask you to um, take microphone, I want to say that uh, I would like that you don't merely put your hand up uh, um, if you don't have a burning or a very clear uh, kind of question. Um, and uh, having been through a whole season of satsang in Rishikesh, not all of you, of course, but many of you here, then I want you really, I would like to see uh, more that you are coming from a place of a deeper um, understanding of our true nature, and whatever is left to clarify, then we can clarify that today. 
went and finally just again opening the ground door, the room for all sincere um, questions and uh, less focus on personal personal things too much, except when they're absolutely necessary to mention that. So thank you very much. Oh, very good. Very good. Guruji. Yeah, good morning to you. Mm. I have to mention that um, because it's really necessary that last few years I'm going, my body is going, um, having lots of symptoms, mm -hmm. physical, and I came to you, I guess, on the first time for be free of that, and now I just want to be free. And what, whatever, I really don't. And I feel blessed. Even I having today very strong symptoms. Mm. So that, <coughs> that's why I, I want to speak because everyone here gives me so much courage to to go all the way. All the way. All the way. All the I really I feel <coughs> blessed. <coughs> and I really don't want to miss my chance. It's enough suffering. And um, another thing, in Rishikesh, during our inquiries, there is something like um, kind of dormant, like gluten state you, you were mentioning. Even I'm uh, <coughs> following your pointings, mm -hmm. Something is there like um, kind of subtle destruction, but it's totally seen. You're not to get involved with what you see. We all know uh, that it, it's all an, an impermanent field, you know. Yeah, this is why I ask at some point that you pay some clear attention to to what is uh, arising in you that seems to be uh, sucking your attention into it, <coughs> to take a good look at that, really to look at it, you see, <coughs> and see wh who lasts. It Does it last or you last? Hmm? Look at it and see what two of them cannot sit, two kings cannot sit on one throne. Either it will be there and you not, or you are there and it is not there. You see? And if this is clearly, you know, observed, discerned like that, then the fear should leave. Or it becomes meaningless for you, you see? Each time we look at these uh, uh, this this flow of phenomena, and then something is reading it in the wrong way. We're reading it with identity on our side, which intensifies the meaning <coughs> that we are giving to the phenomena we are perceiving. You see, but I don't say close the eyes and shut down the senses and don't look. I say no, no. Let them function according to their own law. But you stay as the witness of it. Something just observes. And if you observe, it won't be there for very long. If you're not attached to what you're seeing, you will find that it's just a cloud and it just floats on by. You see? But what tends to happen as a habit, when certain uh, thoughts come, <coughs> then it, they're, they're accepted very personally. And by accepting them personally, they join the sense of your own inner life, which they are not by nature like that. It's just true association, you see. And as I'm speaking, <coughs> I'm feeling it through with you and seeing, but it should be easy for you. You see? You stay only, you keep quiet, don't judge anything, don't uh, be so quick to interpret. If there is a reflex to interpret something, that is also phenomenal. You stay put, you don't move. 
You just somehow you're looking, you see. <clears throat> now you may ask, can I stay like this all the time? I say, stay like this for now and keep looking. And see, because the mind interrupts and says, but how can I live like this? I have things to do, I cannot sit around all day paying attention to my thoughts. You see? Well, better to pay attention to them than to be driven by them. Pay attention and then what happens in the actuality of observing without identity? You come and to discover a space that simply is effortless in itself. <clears throat> it doesn't have a job even to observe. Simply observing happens naturally. And you find in this space, if there is attention needed for a certain thing, it's not coming from the mind or the person anymore. It's like, it's the activity of the universe is happening, and it feels totally correct. You know, the inner feelings, everything goes to support the expression of that uh, thought or feeling, you see. It feels totally natural, it leaves no footprints in the consciousness after. It's simply a natural thing. If you simply think it through, you're going to encounter a lot of obstacles. The mind will say, yeah, but if you do this, this is going to happen, and I'm going to have to miss it, I'm going to take a lot of time to do this. And this is how we crowd our being with so much unnecessary thought. If you simply uh, observe, and not observe as though you're watching a movie, but observe uh, in a very passive and neutral way, just noticing the thoughts that come, and, or you may ask, uh, who, who is so fascinated by these thoughts? Who is pulled away by them? Then you can see at a certain point, if you keep this intention inside, this question, who is being pulled by it? Then you'll see at some point, his attention is going. Attention seems to go by habit with certain thoughts, not with every thought. <clears throat> it is as though each thought that comes appears to be auditioning for your attention. And if you give it attention, it perpetuates its existence and it seems to hang around more, like you're feeding them. You see? And this is why I gave the example, and I think I told it in Rishikesh, no? that in London, one of our great sightseeing places for tourists all over the world is Trafalgar Square. And that in Trafalgar Square, for many, many, many years, you know, there were thousands of pigeons flying around in Trafalgar Square. Tourists would come and take pictures with them. There were so many photographers with Polaroid cameras taking pictures and charging and selling little cups of corn to feed the pigeons. It was a tradition going on for many, many years. But the new mayor came and says, enough. London is a modern city. We cannot have all this pigeon poo everywhere. And people walking, uh, you know, like this. <clears throat> so he said, okay, we have to get rid of this. It said the pigeons are a nuisance and a health risk. And it's right there next to Buckingham Palace. We can't have pigeon poo everywhere. No? So he said, what did he say? He said, as from a certain date, it is illegal to feed the pigeons, but you should not harm them. So we don't want them in Trafalgar Square. Simply stop feeding them. And the date came, and it became illegal. It became a law to not feed them. And the pigeons were showing up like, where, you know, where's the corn? What's happening? Where's the tourists? You know, photographers. Nobody. Nothing was to be seen. They were hanging around for a few weeks like that, showing up. No food was offered to them. Everybody was encouraged. People told the tourists, "No, no, we don't do this anymore." They came in the night with these big uh, trucks and water, water, big water hose. They washed all years and years of pigeon poo away. The Trafalgar Square became a very clean place. After like one month, no pigeon. They were showing up in my town and stuff like that and other places where nobody wanted them. But they were showing up in all different, but Trafalgar Square, no. Because they were not getting any food. And I felt it was a beautiful metaphor for the mind also. Hmm? Don't feed him. 
people are asking how to kill the mind, no, just don't feed him. You got a silver bullet, how are you going to kill the mind? Simply it's starved of the oxygen of your attention and it dries up. You see? When I say mind, you know, mind is a tremendous power. It is beautiful. Mind, all this, our way of perceiving names and forms, relationship, it's all mind. But that's not the mind that's the trouble so much. It's more the psychological aspect of the mind and that the consciousness has adopted <clears throat> certain concepts coming from the mind as what it is. And then that creates all this limitation. And then from the limitation, struggle and suffering, insecurities, all these things came. So just, so just like that, you, you don't give attention. Not like this, not to be afraid, don't be living from under the bed, looking for the mind. No, no, no. Simply you move as you do. Some thoughts come naturally in life, you, you move. But you are now a deeper place of awareness. You see that this thought, you know certain thoughts very well. You know where they are going. You know where they are going. No? So you just don't follow them. I was telling you the other day of this song. I've been listening to the song. No? What is her name? Taylor Swift. <laughs> I was listening to Taylor Swift because I was looking on the internet and looking. I said, uh, some of these singers, I mean, they are the biggest hits on YouTube. Something like you know, nearly two, 200,000 million <laughs> hits. I said, I want to listen to this song, what they're listening. And someplace in this song, she was saying, you know, she was looking at some gorgeous guy. And she was saying, you look like you're going to be my next mistake. I said, ha, 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 that's kind of uh, full on, you know. <laughs> because, and I can see why the people there are so, uh, you know, wow, you know, she's hot stuff. I mean, she, and she says things that, uh, I don't know who writes her songs, if it's her. And she says, you know, Whatever is your whatever is your fantasy, you know, I can be that girl for one month. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of people say, "Wow, you know." So she's very popular. <laughs> Sometimes two hundred thousand million. What is this about? We look such thirty-five thousand, <laughs> fourteen thousand. I said, "Pretty good, still pretty good." <laughs> They're pretty good. I mean, there's some around, you know. <laughs> so this thing, these words, you look like you, you are going to be my next mistake. We know this thing with the thoughts as well. If you go, some you know where you're going with it. But still, we encourage and go along, and then somehow, it's an old game. Yeah? By itself, I don't think it is such a big deal. We make the big deal of it. It's not thoughts that make a big deal about themselves, because no thought is thinking itself. There's one thought that is thinking all other thoughts, and that thought is called the I thought. I concept is the great grandmother of all thoughts. It is the thinker of thoughts. And we, consciousness, identify with that thought and feel it is you are the thinker of thoughts and the doer of actions. And it seems totally uncontestable until at some point, as you go more deeply into your true place, automatically these things become known to you with such virility and such strength that you don't have to work hard to know them. They are arising out of the harmony that we are. <clears throat> you see. And sometimes I wonder if it is uh, really difficult, or it's just that we are so good at postponing and avoiding, and that we have so much investment and in, in the phenomenal world, or that uh, there's a fear of going beyond the apparent known. 
into the realm of the unknown. But this is only from the mind's perspective because fact is, you are the unknown. Being attached to the apparent known. And this kind of dualistic knowing is only appearing, as I say, in the realm of duality. <coughs> the language also, instrument of duality. <coughs> Which is not a crime, by the way. People will speak, oh, you know, that's duality, that's duality. But even to have the concept of non duality is based upon duality also. If there was only non-duality, why would you want to even know about it? There cannot be experience without duality. That when we introspect and go more deeply and find out that the duality itself is perceived, you see? By what is it perceived? Even a sense of non-duality is perceived by what it is perceived. In the excellent uh, writings of uh, Sri Adi Shankar, <coughs> I think there's a book called uh, the Vivek Chundamani or something. It's something beautiful he said. He said, those who believe in non-duality and those who believe in duality um, are still far from the truth. It has no reading and nothing to compare with it. Then you have to find that place within your own self, which cannot be compared with anything else. Comparisons begin outside somewhere, one, two steps out. But there is nothing to compare. It cannot be known in the classical sense of the word knowing, because by whom could it be known? Something other than itself? It makes the functioning of perception possible in which even the perceiver is perceived. Experiencing is experienced. Silence is perceived. Space. Even the sense of emptiness is perceived. By what are they perceived? Can that be perceived? And where is the position of that in relation to your intuitive sense of yourself? Is there two? Hmm? So as we speak about these things, <clears throat> the light of intuitive awareness, you see, scans internally to find if there's any seeds of separation. And only by recognizing them, it knows from that source, that place where the recognition take place, immediately. These seeds are scorched. <clears throat> they are only conceptual seeds, waiting to germinate. How they germinate? Because the I thought contacts them, or they contact the I thought, and somehow they copulate somehow, and produce all these children. more mouths to feed. Hmm? 
as we reflect on these things, you, know, you find yourself losing form. You are not so rigidly a three-dimensional object, but more an intuitive space, an intelligence <coughs> that is beyond form, pregnant with awareness. All the senses are functioning in the body, but they are not creating any trouble. Even thoughts now, they lose their grip. They are simply like clouds floating in the infinite sky. The sky doesn't suffer from clouds. It has no favourite cloud. All are passing. Same for us. Every sensation is merely a tourist. When you know that, <clears throat> even the sense of letting go has already happened. Thoughts lose their magnetism their attractiveness, because the Self is not in need of that type of relationship. It alone shines, you see, luminous, radiant, like the Sun giving light to the Earth, the Self gives life to the whole world. We don't need to study this. It arises spontaneously in the awakened mind. So put no effort there. Simply put your attention at the root of the seeing, of perception, you see. And abide there, stay there, here. By habit, the idea all we have of ourselves is always knocking and seeking more food to sustain itself. The food of belief, of attachments, of desire. But if you stay only as the awareness of them, gradually they subside in their itchiness. Because at first, you know, these thoughts that we have been entertaining, they come like with an itch, like athlete's foot. I don't know if any of you have had athlete's foot. I have had it. Hmm? There is nothing athletic about it. You are itching, and it is the sweetest itch. But when you stop, it produces only pain and blood. There is a time when this itch of the mind comes, and it will feel impossible to resist him then let whatever has to happen, happen, but stay also as the weakness. You may find in these moments, you are also the one doing the itching, and at the same time witnessing, and it is shared. Your attention is shared, your energies are shared. But stay more in the, in the weakness, and the scales will tip in your favour, you see. <clears throat> Are we on the same page? Yes. Thank you, thank you. I'm just checking your pulse now and again to see if you are fast asleep. <coughs> okay. Huh? Stay in the Yes, be one with it, meaning that you have within you the capacity to stay in the place. Uh, whereby all these are perceived, rather than to go with the itch of the mind and start to identify there. Because of that uh, habit, uh, all the corruption came, all the distortions come. 
because you have left your seat, so to speak. You follow this? Something is going there. The, the human beings, we have to be trained to, to pay attention to the power we have within us to stay put and to observe rather than to jump into the whole habit and regime which is to always identify. You can see there are some people who there is no delay. It seems sometimes there is no delay between thought and acting them out. As the thought comes, uh, there is no, they seem at that stage, a certain stage, that there is no gap to simply observe and let them just go by without you. Like as they come, it's like they have a front door key to your apartment and you're out. I've seen sometimes people, it's a very small bodied person, taking big dog for a walk on, the, on a lead. But it turns out the dog is taking them for a walk because they have no control. The dog gets up and he sees another dog and whoa, and you're almost you're gone. In the beginning, it can feel like that. So some thoughts we are we have no power to resist them. In the beginning, but gradually, with some training and really paying attention uh, to your inherent power to observe without identifying your power comes back to you. It's nothing to do with your physical size, your strength, but more to do with uh, a true mind of understanding and not giving in to the fickle tendencies of the mind. Some people, they feel that they are too weak. They cannot, I cannot do it. So, so, like a little mouse. I can't do it. It's, it's too hard. I say, stop that. Stop that. Shake that off. You are not weak. You are behaving weak. You are not weak. The frailty of your body is not a reading of your spirit. Well, look at Mahatma Gandhi. He is skinny as a stick. But what a mighty presence. It is not to do with uh, if you are strong enough. No. Your might is in your being. You see? And uh, how is the being growing in strength? Simply by, this is the most potent thing, that if you stay aware of the traffic of the mind and emotions, sensations and so on, Rather than going into this reflex, which to engage every time mind sprouts, you're out there somehow farming concepts. With a little exercise, a little practice of observing the tendencies of the mind without identifying with them, you find the strength returning to you. And how quick things can turn around. They are much more effective to observe without identity than to try and suppress tendencies. It doesn't work. It's the reflex to try and get rid of what you are frightened of. But more intelligence and exercise and good pointing is, is more helpful. Because if you try to suppress something, it's like a, a, a balloon full of water. You press him down here, you think it's good, but he comes up behind you. And you say, oh my God, is there? you press it down, it comes up over here. You can't suppress tendencies and somehow subdue them in a natural way. They will always come up and cause some trouble. But when you begin to observe without personal identity, and especially when, when the person comes into somehow on the screen and you can begin to observe, where the person is constructed, the constructed self, you see how it is made out of habits, tendencies and false identity. As soon as that becomes observable, it comes in the picture, everything changes, you see. Because where you would be identifying with the actions, reactions and interactions of the body-mind, now that, that uh, stops and you become aware of a deeper space 
we're observing is uh, free from psychological or personal interpretation. I want you to experience that and share your experience, what it is now. This is where the lives change. This is the true uh, place where transcendence begins to flourish in you, not by uh, street fighting with your mind. It, it doesn't work. You, it will beat you. Or at least the idea you have of who you are. It cannot beat you, the self. Next one, anybody will come? Okay, please, we we'll pass one some over here. Hi, Muji. Hi. Um, I have a question. Since since being touched by this message of poverty, mm. which has been a few years, um, I've experienced a long journey of like clearing out and um, sort of turning from a seeker into a finder more, not being engaged so much with the content of the mind and experiencing this immense joy and aliveness within me, like at the bottom. But there remains this chronic itch, which is like, like a longing to go deeper and deeper. And I want to know, is that coming from the mind, or is that like a Zen stick, like which keeps me um, going in the right direction? Mm. And which is the right direction, for instance? If I fall into that longing itself, mm -hmm. it's... Longing is also perceived. Longing is also perceived. The falling inwards is also perceived and experienced. But it is perceived, you see? And the falling, where does the falling end? If and when it ends, that is also perceived. What is perceiving it? Can that fall? This you must pay attention to. And I'm not talking about some psychological trick or any kind of cleverness but constantly to keep turning your face towards yourself. You see? Because here, you see, it's very subtle, and it takes the form and the label, the tag of spirituality even. I still feel that there's still more to go and more. And when, while that is believed, it is believed into existence, and it becomes your experience. And then you say, oh my God, I think I haven't gone far enough. And so it keeps you in this mode of a seeker, which is fine up to a point. We need to be in the role of the seeker in order to stimulate the, the, the impulse to find. But sometimes you have overshot the mark. If at a certain point, now you say, now it's saying, you know, you come to the last step and your leg, your leg is raising to make another step. And it says, no, let your leg fall. You are here. Be still, but the mind is so used to making steps, he doesn't want another step. I've seen it happen where someone has done the inquiry and it has come to a certain place. And it is totally in emptiness, you see. And there I sense that this simply be here, without any image of what here is, simply be with this now. And then what happened? A thought comes in and says, yes. But what is perceiving this emptiness? You see? This being. And immediately pulled into thought. It's trying to create something that is perceiving. So how do you know when? You see? But I saw in this moment, in that instant, that uh, it was a thought that come uh, and somehow plucked you back into personhood. Yes. To do more work when simply there was nobody there to work. How will you develop that discernment to know it's enough somehow? 
or even no even assessment, it's enough. Everything collapses. You have gone beyond the, the, the capacity of the mind to keep knowing more. There are some subtle things. How to know? I cannot tell you. I only say that if you continue to remain in this neutrality of being, whereby every sensation is being perceived, but the, the perceiving of them is not as engaging as the awareness itself in which they are arriving. For a long time, we are fascinated by the story and the activity of the body mind. Oh, yeah, look, this is happening to me, and oh, ooh, ooh, and oh, yes, I feel better now. And how can I? All outside, they're all outside, I put like that. They are just the story and the storifying of the self, you see. And so, but what is aware of this? And something suddenly feels lazy to look. What is aware of this? You see? And who is going to receive the question? The one who is unaware? So these things, when you. There was a time, I was not reading books. Now even I don't read much. But I found that some books I would read a little bit, and maybe just one sentence, and I had to put it down. Sometimes two days I am in bed. The impact of those statements are <laughs> oh, gone. I could feel no energy in the head. <sighs> Maharaj, your statements are too strong. <laughs> like this. I'm not reading and 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 reading, 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 reading. Just something touches there and it is enough. It's going to detonate internally. And maybe for a while you realize I don't know anything at all. I don't know where I am. Am I going to know? Yesterday I thought I knew who I was. Today I'm. Off. I don't know what's happening. Should I have read this book? Or no? no, no. Something intuitively, no. This is a blessing. I see. And simply, uh, there's no going out for lunch today. There's no seeing friends today. I'm gone. The impact of a real insight can somehow cut the activity of the vital force for a little bit, so you are just there. And something is happening internally that internally your mind cannot understand. The mind wants to give some overview, like, ah, oh, yes, you know. But you are simply in a state of uh, neutrality and deep surrender or something like that. So going deeper, there's a time. There's a time I say yes, yes, yes. Mm, stop holding on, you know, because perhaps we are holding on to to the sense of life itself. Sometimes I feel uh, it's a kind of some impulse is to hold on to life, just biological life. You don't want to hold on to that. And something is inviting you. Let go into me. It may not be experienced as a falling. Just somehow it creates the attitude and the inner ambient of everything. You're simply here. Don't let your mind make up any shape. If it feels that there's deeper to go, and uh, there's no way that those words can really get activated into an experience, just as thought, better you let them go. You see. But try to understand the place that I'm pointing to, and from also, because there's no. There are no steps to be made there, actually. It's totally beyond the conceptual field. You are already there, you see. You are already there, but we scarcely look, because we have the drug of personhood, 
All the beings are suffering from person poison. Too much person, too much person personality obsession. And it brings in a lot of inner noise and makes it difficult for you to hear this type of pointing. It builds up some static, some field of resistance is there. But as soon as it's pointed out that even this play of resistance, don't believe it, and especially don't identify with it. Because if you identify with it, it's like you become it. If you can perceive it and say, it's just another sensation, soon to be exchanged for another sensation, don't invest any energy in it, then it also passes without leaving any footprints in the consciousness. All the things I'm telling you, they are deeply practical and alive in your seeing. If you don't touch or combine any sensation with yourself, you will not be marked by them. Sometimes the mind comes and it appears as though you should engage with it because it has great value in this moment. You see? But maybe a more advanced uh, understanding, simply look and say, but what can be more important than what is right now? And even for whom is it important even? And immediately they resist the temptation to be pulled into some struggle and stay as the, the timeless awareness itself. From time to time, little seeds of the old identity will keep coming and sprouting right in front of you. But your wisdom is becoming greater and greater. And your powers to discern these forces is becoming much more acute. So you are able to detect them quickly and discard those seeds before they can sprout. Am I speaking to you? You are somehow seemingly accomplishing everything in your stillness. But when we listen with the earth mind, earth body, you think doing, doing, you know, what do I do? This is the mantra of the ego. What so what do I do? How do I do? How can I change this? You see? It's a very, very hostile realm. It's full of dynamic clumsiness even. To do, do. Understanding is important. There's a place for doing. But just routine doing, uh, it smacks of something that is not, it's not authentic. You see? And it gives rise and sustains the sense of personhood. No one who is free hmm, venerates personhood. It's become so nullified that yes, they can wear it again, you can wear the sense, but so it's so superficial now for you. Because uh, even being established in the, in the state of liberation, you still understand the language of uh, the person. Your parents will still call you by your whole name. They will still refer to you as, you know, yes, you know, so get up, you lazy old boy, and whatever. And you will understand, you cooperate with that, but inwardly, you see? Sometimes parents will be the last to recognize you, because they see with old eyes, eyes of attachments. And those glasses are very thick. Still, don't try to educate people to appreciate you. Arrogance. Just move in your Move in your natural flow. Leave it to God. We also love our own sense of free will. Limited as it is, we have a fear of being without our own private will. This is one of the aces of the sleeve of the mind. Somehow you feel you're giving up your, your own autonomy to a higher power. You think, no, 
I like making my own decisions. You see? But in the experience itself of surrendering and, and the fruit of surrendering, you see, the one who is free does not even need choice. The universe uh, is one with the universe. This being is one with the universe, which is in perfect harmony and alignment with itself. Why would it have a desire? Because everything is so perfect. Why would you, if everything is perfect, why do you want desire for? So sometimes you don't. Uh, we, we don't have the feeling. I may not agree with God. I may not want what He wants. <laughs> Time for a joke. I told this one already. It's coming up now. A certain pilgrim is walking through Himalayas, no? In the night, he was told, "Don't go in the night. You are not familiar with this path." He said, no, 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 I've got to get to a certain place by morning. He sets off, no? And uh, you know, very early in the morning he's walking and take a wrong turn on a very narrow strip pathway. In the dew, you know, the, the stones are slippery. He steps on a stone and goes tumbling down the hill. Can you imagine? And over the edge, he's dangling, hanging, hanging on, hanging on to the root of a tree. You know? So he's dangling, and his arm is hurting, the body is hurting. He's hanging on. You know? The light is just clearing. The, the early morning sun is soon coming. The light is clear, so he can see a little bit. And he looks down, and it's a long drop. <laughs> it's a long drop. Ah, ah, he has no strength to pull himself up. So, of course, in his in his uh, panic, you know, he's help. He's, help. Is anybody there? Nothing. Ah, ah. He tries to get hold with the other hand. He's dangling now, ten, fifteen minutes. And his fingers are getting tired. Help! Is anybody there? <laughs> then a voice came. Yes. Ah! <sighs> help me! Help me! Who is it? God. So <laughs> you're playing a joke on me. So, so he says, God? Oh my God. Says, God, thank you for coming, please. How can I get up there? Help me. What should I do? So God says, Let go. Let go. No, 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 no. What are you saying? Let go. Please, God, no, help me, help me. Please, help me to come out. What I should do? God, don't play jokes now. I, I don't. Please, help me. You're God. <laughs> Let go. Oh, no, 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 no. Let go. No, 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 no. <sighs> Arm is hurting now, really, really badly. Help! Is anybody there? Yes. Who is it? Who is it? God. God, please help me. I'm going to fall. Please save me. Save me. What I should do? Let go. He says, no, no, I can't. Please, please, please. God, you should not be saying things like that. Come on. Trust me, let go. Uh, he's crying, crying. Now the arm is really, really tired and he's feeling, no, no, no. 
After another 10 minutes. Hello? <laughs> Help? Nothing come. Help? Is anybody there? Advice come. Yes. <laughs> Who is it? God. <laughs> he says, is anybody else up there? <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody else up there? <laughs> so sometimes we don't want <laughs> to hear this voice. He say, "No, you might ask me to do something I don't want." And you know, we may not agree. <laughs> so <laughs> And this could be one of the things that is hidden inside us, that we feel afraid that in surrendering, you might go, you have to give up the things that you feel are important, the things you are attached to. But I've found it is not like that. Not in the beginning, Bharat. <laughs> Because it is known that you don't have the power to give it up. The attachments are too strong. So it is not a primary requirement to give up these things. You see? <coughs> the one who knows, knows that it will be experienced as too strong a thing for you to give up things. So it doesn't come like that. He says, more, find out what you are. Come a bit more inside. Look from here. And as you begin to experience your true place, hmm, then the old position feels, wow, not important. Then it's easy to give it up. But when you don't know what is coming, it feels like you're being made to make a big sacrifice. And how do you know that what is coming is something that you will prefer? So this is also one thing that people, the resistance is like, well, no, I might give up my my beautiful life only to get to end up like some spiritual vegetable. I don't want like that. You see? So the one does not say give up, give up, give up. You see? It says, no, no, leave those things for now. Come here, look from here. And one finds that there is space enough. <gasps> wow. I, I, it's a completely different feeling altogether. I have been spending all my life sharpening my sword, but it's only to kill dragons. They are finding there's no dragons. All this life sharpening my swords to kill something that doesn't exist. But you will only know that when you come to your original place. And from the original place, you'll see, ah, suddenly. It is not. Uh, it was only seen <coughs> because I was feeding, and a delusion <coughs> became attached to it, and felt, no, I cannot uh, give it up. It's too hard. Even if God was to say, listen, come to heaven with me, but before you know, you can't take your cigarettes. Okay, you have to leave your cigarettes. Uh, really? Can I have a last smoke? You know. And could you make me not want any more after this? You see? So don't be afraid that somehow you're being asked to, oh, to do all these things. This is not where it is. This is not, it was not really so important. It's not so important. And you can tell when you find the people who are putting so much pressure on behavior. Oh, you know, your hair is too long and you're you're smoking, you know, you cannot come to church. You're drinking, you're drinking, you know, you cannot come to church. They make it more harder for the people. I say, no, 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 these are small things. You come and listen and see if it speaks to your heart. It doesn't matter. You, you come and sit down here. 
give them a chance to find for themselves rather than to tell you what you should do or should not do. However kind a human being is, God is kinder still. And uh, a lot of times, uh, even there was one passage in the Bible where Jesus was saying to some of the, the Pharisees and teachers of the law, He says, <clears throat> You have blocked the road to heaven, you see, and uh, blocked the people from entering. You yourself have not entered, you see. Mm. And you are stopping them from entering. Too much laws, too much rule. And so we are focusing again on making changes in the realm of the body mind, which uh, somehow we have not been able to conquer. He says, No, come here. Come here, rest in the silence of being, and look from here and see. Who are you who see? And what do you see when your eyes are clean? This is satsang, you see. How can someone trust and believe and love a God if God is about do's and don't? Don't do this wrong. Oh, you're going to go to hell. I'm going to say, this is not of God, this is of man, of mind. Hmm. And then the person, someone will come? Yes, okay. Uh, who is it? Will come? Okay. <coughs> Hello, beloved Muji. I guess I had a question about um, illusion, illusion of thought, illusion of temptation. But um, since uh, London, when with your help I went into the emptiness, and it was amazing, and um, I just felt so free. Mm -hmm. um, for the first time, I yes. think. But for the first time, but I knew that in some way. And then um, I was doing my activities in stillness and everything was as I thought, uh, how I felt in the emptiness. Till when I came to Rishikesh. Um, and um, it's just, it was still, I was still in that space. Um, and then the blow came, the hardest, the hardest fear, the hardest pain. And um, <clears throat> I collapsed. I collapsed, but not collapsed and sort of quite quickly. And I looked at it, and that then it came for that emptiness, or well, that was the thought of my illusion. I, so I put the myself. The emptiness was. Slow it down. was just the mind was telling me that that's when I was free. It was it was like the the comfortable space saying that it was um, you feel good there, stay there. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Until the the hardest thing that I couldn't cope with came. Mm -hmm. um, the fear of. Um, Basically, it was the fear of um, separation and um, uh, it just hit me so hard that I said, you know, where I was in all this, I had all these great thoughts and, and I thought, you know, and then I saw that that was my ego. Um, that wasn't the really me, but I was thinking that I was there. Um, in that moment, I... It was like that. I didn't want that anymore. It was not even wanting. It was the uh, my inner everything just went. I want to burn everything. I want to yeah. just burn it down to the core. I don't. <coughs> I don't care what's left over. I just not even thinking about it. It's just. It was just kind of lying there naked and just saying, "Take me." Um, when I was in that state, what I saw, so I was like suffocating. I was suffocating so much that 
I didn't want that. I was like burping inside of the. Um, Let me say something. The, Let me say something because <clears throat> what happened there? Someone discovered great emptiness. Everything feels beautiful, spontaneous, intuitive, free. What more to be done? It's finished. There's no person like this. You see? How? Because I was listening, you see. You said, yes, it was. So I said, it's gone. You speak in past tense now. It was, it was so wonderful, meaning it still isn't. It was. And what make it was? Because you say, I was in that emptiness. Like two things, like you are in this room. The room won't leave, you will leave. You see? You are in this emptiness as a tourist, visitor. So this one who comes into emptiness cannot stay in emptiness, he has to go also. You see? So that happens also. That in a moment of clear insight, there was, but still the eye has not perished. Not so easy. And for a while you may have wonderful illuminations and wonderful, everything is so spontaneous, everything like this. But the seed of eye is hiding in there. You see? And then he starts to come. Something will, you will catch the reflection of him. And then you start, you start to see, yes, this identity. Yes, I feel like I'm not able to stay there, Muji. And then this thing come, and then more deeper tendencies are coming up, and so on. Why? Identity. Something is still identified with the sense of person, you see. And so much is the identity and the person seeming to be one, that the suffering is right there, like that. And it seems a space to be to look and say, but this sort of person also is a phenomenon. It is also, even though it is felt energetically, it's like it's flowing in the veins and it's it's in the lungs, it's closer than intimacy. But still it is only a sensation there, you see, that comes and go. But the identity Grips, you know, oh, why can I? How can I get out? I thought I was finished. Oh, this is. Please burn everything. And this voice in the wilderness. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Please, 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 help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. You see? You say what happened? Then? <clears throat> as soon as you recognize the deeper space of the awareness, which is person free. Watching the sense of the person in this body and seeing that it is still only imagination. You see? Then no further work needs to be done on what is imaginary because the power is held back in the awareness. It is not hemorrhaging energy. It takes a lot of energy to be a person, it takes no energy to be the self. You see, we forget how much energy there is in the person. It's a very uh, high maintenance state to be a person. It has so many likes and dislikes, so much needs, so much judgment, so much fears, so much complexes. You see, and this is why we look so tired because a person burns a lot of energy. To stay as person, as you're coming again back into the arts energy, it's much more open, less less afraid, more embracing of life. Life is not a threat. Just experience from the deeper place, from the place of person. You see, all different things are, things are you know somehow imagined to be. You know, threatening and so on, but from the place of the self, right? Threatening to to who exactly? See if you can find. 
and it evaporates. Just in the mere looking itself, it's like that. So this is what happens, that you have to come to Rishikesh to flush out that one who was enjoying the Self, because no, no doubt you are, you are the Self, but it retained the sense of the person, and that person, sooner or later, is going to sprout and cause trouble. Because yeah, that's how I how it felt. It was mm. in that moment. I just it was. Um, I I saw there was when when everything was now suffocating. There was there was this person that came kind of like in, in imaginary in front of me, mm. and and I just <laughs> could see that that was the fear. But it was dressed as a fireman. And he was just saying, "Oh, don't go through this door. <coughs> you know, there's, like, you know, just go, go back to the past. You know, this is yes. where." And I just, I just said no. You know, and 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 I jumped through that wall of of. It was smoke, and but it was like with me. It was just I just jump into mm -hmm. that sort of unknown emptiness, yeah. love, everything. But I just, I said that I just felt it. You know, that's it. Yeah. Um, and in there, I found it was nothing. And yeah. it was like I was a block of ice. And I through jumping that I just became water, you know, and water of the beginning of the, like the back into the consciousness of the water. So just from what I came, I became again, and it was just that in that moment, I just felt, I mean, there's no words. There's no words to explain it. It is still and, like and, that. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and good. and and it, it's just like I was like feeling how, for example, I'm I'm a mother. When I became a mother, when when the baby was born, <laughs> I just knew, I am a mother. I knew yeah. what to do. Yeah. This is how it feels. I just knew how to be me, yeah. because, I am there, yeah. always, and without this kind of you know chatter in the mind, without that. This I just still. You know, when it comes something, as well as talking about the illusion of it and the illusion of the temptation, but you know, the tempting you something, and I'm not even now looking back. It's just uh, so when you said as well that you know the God put a mirror there in front, in front of us, for its own likeness. So I think it's just thank you that through your eyes I could look back into my eyes. To see that image. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> but no image is you. Hmm? Well, I mean, being. Yes, yeah. 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 Yes. An imageless image. Yeah. <laughs> Timeless time. Yeah, just, just there. That's very beautiful. Then you don't have to plan your existence. No. Hmm? You are existence itself, <coughs> not your planning existence. There is no separation. You are the existence and also the witness of existence at its play is occurring to you. Bring your life back into the source itself, you see. Searching for the location of the person or the self, and not finding one. What great discovery! Something is here, a something nothing. I mean, not tangible to the senses or to the mind in that way. <clears throat> but yet it's supremely happy, content. These are very human words. <coughs> content, happy, peaceful. Thank you. Mm 
Can I come close? Okay. If I could uh, pull off this face, pull off the ears, pull off the skin, pull off the organs, pull off the heart, the brain, take everything out, everything, everything. Everything visible, take it away, pull off. So. What will I find? Taking everything visible away. How much distance? How much distance now remain then? No distance. No distance. That's all we need to know. They say that the early I saw one picture actually because I always liked paintings, drawings from when I was a young boy, you know. And I saw in one book the early, some early, um, uh, what you call them, like well, kind of doctors or so, you know, mm, anatomists or whatever. And they were the painting. And they were opening up the body of a human being. The first time they were doing it in this kind of way, you know. Quite crude thing, opening to see where the person is inside the body. Where, where is it that? In much the same way, like maybe a child might look in the back of the radio to see where these people are speaking from. And they were looking to try to find where is, where is he. Where are you precisely? <coughs> or there was a feeling that our being was about the same size as the body. It went as wide as the fingertips and as high as the top of the head. <coughs> Somehow it was kind of stuffed in the body. And then a little thing. <laughs> but as I began to to feel that somehow, and hearing also, for the first time, consciousness is in the body. 
but also the body is in consciousness. It was, it was such a freeing moment to hear this. Like the body was not the container of the consciousness that determined the size of the consciousness, but the body, and in fact all bodies and everything perceived is inside the consciousness that you are. That was a radical discovery. Like, Not just this body is in the consciousness, but all bodies are in the consciousness and have no other reality or birthplace than from this consciousness itself also. That took some time. What? Like, it's too much, it's too much. But even this response, like, it's too much for me, we came back. But that's also just some words floating inside this big consciousness. What was the size of the consciousness? <coughs> Where was the boundary of the consciousness? I was thinking, boundary. But if it's a boundary, it must be a form then, where it stop, and then maybe another kind of consciousness begin or something. When I first began to hear these things, because you know, Rob, a simple thing, you know, love playing football and ping pong. So when I first started to hear what is this thing? Where are you? Who are you without this body? Where is the location of that which perceives inside and outside simultaneously? That perceives things on this side of the eyes and things on the inside of the eyes, in the realm of thought and feelings and emotions, memory, it observes that. It observes the, the five elemental world and the combination of the elements that produces the, the visible concrete world we perceive through the senses and the mind. It perceives the subtle flow of energies. It discerns the difference between imagination and actuality and the different regions of time. Without doing any research, how marvelous is the consciousness? And yet, it can pick up such a shallow concept and live in it. It started to come like this when you asked me, Can I come closer? And I thought, Where are you? And where am I? And what is the distance? Unless we are relating only at the physical level, you see. And I wanted to just to push it a little bit hmm? beyond these farms. Hmm? Do we have to get rid of the body to perceive beyond the farm? We could uh, put aside the hard drive of memory, ideas of who we consider ourselves to be, because that is also not consistent. We change who we think we are and how we feel about ourselves is a 
it's like a constant stream of changefulness. If we could leave all this aside, <clears throat> and all the things you think you need, like a future or a past, <coughs> and even an assessment of now, an identity, what remains, you see. <coughs> just, just as though you are hearing it for the first time, really look and see what remains. You don't have to go far. You don't have to go anywhere, in fact. If everything is left aside, hmm? Everything that's knowable, every quality is just left aside. So you are back in your original nature, original being. Everything is secondary. Who are you? Is it valid what remains? Is it handicapped? It is incapacitated? Is it lacking? Why not take a look? All my invitations are now. We think we need. We imagine so many things that can contribute to our happiness or the sense of completeness. Try being without them for a few moments. <clears throat> Leave everything, abandon every intention, every idea, every identity, every wish, every dream for a moment. And the present notion that we have of ourselves, leave everything aside for a moment. Please do this, because over and over again, I find myself sitting with many of you who have not really done it. Really do it. Hmm? Because such a one, I am very delighted to speak with you. Don't half do it. Don't construct something out there and look at it and say, Yeah, I can see. No, do it. Then, if you want to pick up the whole stuff, you can pick it up after again. But for just a few moments, leave everything and experience <coughs> what you are. Without effort, without effort, meaning what is left is no effort at all. Meaning that it is totally natural and does not need the support or the help of any human agent. Do it. And then you can speak from your experience, your experience, not what you have read in the book. It does not take long. So you must also not touch the sense eye, the eye that has any content, any description, any substance. Nothing. And last thing, don't be expecting something. Like, OK, now what? I've done it, so OK, what's the next step? No next step. <coughs> so I invite anyone to take this opportunity and look again. Look at lunchtime, look in the afternoon. You'll begin to enjoy, you'll begin to discover something that you cannot discover from books. You will discover from your own book. <clears throat> I 
I don't feel there's anything in this, in the human kingdom that is beyond or above a silent mind, free of ego. Your senses will still continue to function naturally, but they are natural also. <clears throat> Bodily function will continue to function naturally. But the psychological identity is you don't need. Truth has never pushed you away. It has never turned away from you. It has never looked in your eyes and judged. Everything has come through the mind. But mind is nothing without belief. As I said, a belief or a thought without belief has no power at all. A thought with belief can start a war or begin to heal the pains of a whole nation. You must find out if you yourself are a thought or prior to thought. And you should find out today for sure. Someone once said, <coughs> I think, therefore I am. I say, No, I am thereafter, I think. The sense or the intuition, which you may call a sense of presence, is the earliest reflection or manifestation of the Absolute. It is really the bridge between what is phenomenal and the non phenomenal. It is the lens of the Absolute. Are you in front of the lens of the Absolute or behind the lens? Or both? Or both and beyond? Contemplate. And if you don't get it just now, I would like this recording will be online for a while, and you download and listen and listen and listen again, especially to these points now being made, until somehow your mind comes out of the mist. Of habit-forming delusions.
you must come to the place of total silence. Beyond the sense of someone being silent. In our natural state, we are already beyond. In our display as consciousness and as the evolutionary being, which we call, actually, in its higher aspect, the seeker of truth. Mm. We are that which is in transit and transformation all the time. But I am only pointing that however many times we are transmuting and transforming, all those are watched from a deeper consciousness. Who can refute it? And is this deeper place of seeing to be overlooked and discarded? Or could it not be the answer of answers? But who will receive this answer? The one who receives the answer dies in that moment to duality. Mind is like uh, the psychological mind in satsang. It's like a piece of ice placed in a bowl of warm water. And a melting is taking place spontaneously. There is no effort on the part of the ice, and there is no effort on the part of the water. It is a natural merging. Why? Because the personalized consciousness is bathing again in the original water, in the ocean of its own self. And innumerable stale impressions are washed away. Someone else will come? Who is it? Okay, some over there you can put the microphone. I'm sorry, I just don't know what to tell. It's perfectly okay. <laughs> Sometimes I find myself saying, If truth, if God came now and called you, come with me now, but don't look back. Hmm? Who will come? So just this response has a power.
because you didn't look around to see who was putting their hand up. And uh, you don't want to be left out, so you wouldn't help. No. I'm here. I'm here. Because in the end, we're all alone. But the true alone is to be alone as everything. Not just to be alone as a person. The person will taste aloneness and loneliness. Sometimes it's even been expressed that uh, that God was feeling alone and lonely. He wanted to play, but because only God exists, there was nobody to play with. So he had to create something, had to dream it, because actually he could not do it. And this dream called Maya, the power of Maya became the Lila of life, where God diversified God's Self in innumerable forms in order to taste the sense of relationship, interacting, perceiving, attraction, repulsion, aspiration, love, memory, desire, attachment, transcendence, reunion, the yoga of existence, self-discovery, all of these things could be tasted. By the one appearing as the many, Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Behind you. Mm -hmm. Namaste, Muji Baba. Namaste. Um, I sometimes don't understand what is heaven, hell, good karma, bad karma, birth, rebirth, moksha. Yes. All these things are for the mind. All these things, they are on the level and affect the body-mind um, entity, the sense of when consciousness believes itself to be a person, to be autonomous, meaning that it makes its own decisions, it wants to choose its life. This is God playing as individuality and as ego also. And for that, yeah, this play appears. It is not easy to explain in some way, but as soon as you believe in your own autonomy that you are the doer of actions and the thinker of thought, then you inherit the sense of being responsible for what you do and what you think. But it is a play. There is no karma for the self. There is karma only for the egoic identity. Moksha really means to come out of, to be free from the grip of illusory impressions, to be free from the hypnosis of conditioning, like that. But we don't even need to know about this, not yet. If there is a need to know, know the first things first, the most important thing, and God will give you the rest that you need to know. Because sometimes we learn many things which are not useful. And if you learn what is not useful, it just becomes junk food in you. You see? But when you learn the appropriate thing, the right thing, first and most important, who you are. Because until we know who we are, then you cannot know what other is. If the I to whom other appears, you don't know. You see? So that's called self knowledge. But this is a deceiving phrase because there is nothing really to know as the self. 
Yet, what it means to know the Self is to know everything that the Self perceives are only shadows that arises out of itself, like vapour arising off the surface of the ocean, are also aspects of the ocean. But you talk about karma and so on and so on. Some people are very steeped into the concept of karma and uh, this what happened and will I be born again and I hope I'm born as this and so on so on so. As you believe, actually, so worlds are produced through your beliefs also. So amazingly wise, intricate and all encompassing and inscrutable is the consciousness. That uh, the human mind in the human mould cannot comprehend the might of the Supreme. But you can see the drama of karma acting out every day. That uh, we are perceiving what we are conceiving and experiencing it. And that that can change as understanding deepens and we come closer to the understanding of our true nature. The game changes altogether. And that there is some power that is carrying us along, so to speak. It can seem sometimes that some beings take a very long time to change. And then suddenly, in one overnight, they transform into something very different. We cannot predict how the life will unfold. So if we don't know anything about karma and uh, all these things, forget about it. If later there is a real need and the timing is right, because it's not so much about how much you know, but that it's the right timing. You may speak with someone and it's pure resistance. Oh, no, 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 no. But in the right timing, Somehow everything collapses. Who knows this right timing? You see, it is not announced, go there at three o'clock, that will be the right timing. No. With the one who is free and spontaneous in their unfolding and one with the one with the cosmic rhythm, they simply follow their inclination because their their minds are purified. So they are not suffering from all these distortions. Still, even there, as long as you have a body, the vital force and consciousness, the potential for thought activity can manifest. It simply won't overwhelm you. Another question from you? Mm. Namaste, Muji. Namaste. Huh? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you. I know you um, through Ramana. Uh -huh. And last year I wanted to be here already. Uh -huh. I couldn't go through the mind uh, conditionings, and but um, I was following the satsangs, your satsangs, and in a satsang, a shift happens, and I know where where he now is. And at the beginning, these satsangs in Rishikesh, I was all, uh, again there. And now, it's not, it wasn't more there, it wasn't stable. It was? Huh? It was not stable. Stable, yes, yes. There. Um, 
and I just have a deep witch and a deep sadness as well because I'm not stable in there. Uh -huh. And the witch is just let me be just in your presence, in, in the presence, in the presence of your presence. <coughs> Nothing else I wish. And at the beginning, the body was so much shaking and now happens again. And I thought, I just don't want to postpone anymore. Okay. Your wish, you say, is to be so stable in, in that presence but even if there is a play of unstableness or instability, please remember that you are watching it. We all make this mistake. It is so obvious, yet it seems to be disguised. This instability only becomes important because you feel it is important. You somehow give it an interpretation greater than what it is. It is not the, the action that happened that is the cause of the trouble, but it is the interpretation that then swims up around the action, that then gives it a reading and puts off this bad smell. If somehow even body is shaking, what it means? It means body is shaking. Mind says, you're falling apart, you're not really there enough. And then there's something is purchasing, oh my God, please help me to stabilize, it's coming very strong. No. If this body starts to shake until it becomes a blur, something inside is not shaking. Don't say, this should not be. Say, let anything be. It is only weakness in me as a, a moving, a, a sensation, a temporary. You see? And don't just say that. Be that seeing. Because it is no distance from you. It is simply, we are taking those readings to be much more important than they are in fact. Even you feel, I am not stable. If that I is the person, of course no person is stable. What watches the person? Don't be the person. Observe the sense of the person, which is you need memory for that also. Without memory, you cannot also retain your person. I know some people, uh, some in my family also. Mother, this mother, this mother was completely um, in love with her husband and my uh, brother's wife's parents, and also then somehow uh, father passed away. She's getting on, start to lose memory. One other friend of mine, her god godparents also lost memory when, when she went to see him. And uh, they have a long history, they know each other from she's a baby. She goes to see him and uh, he says, Oh, welcome, nice to see you, see you. Says, oh, thank you, thank you. He says, yes. What is your name? <laughs> what? It's me. I won't say her name. He says, oh, very nice name. Very nice. You see? No, I want to tell you a little bit about this because it happened. He was a very jolly, happy chappy. Very happy, happy, happy in this state. Before, very reflective. Now, can't remember anything at all. I'm very happy. Hi, how are you? He says, I'm fine. How are you? I'm very good. Come sit down. You talk a little bit, huh? Uh, where have you come from? Come up from London. London, oh yes, London is very nice, isn't it? Yes, yes, so, so, so. 
Yes. Sorry, what is your name again? Like this. Some beings, uh, they are happy because they have no memory. Papaji said, you need nothing to be happy. You need something to be sad. Mine is always working on something. Oh, yes, sad. Some of these beings they have no memory collection, but they are still fully the being. You can perceive them. You see, but nothing built up to be unhappy about. No memory even. I'm not painting it as the most beautiful state, because uh, it is not complete in some way. It's better off than sitting there just being miserable and mostly about past. Also no future, no sense of time. This friend came back and said to me, it was so horrible, and asked me, please, if I ever came to that state, would you promise that you will help me to, to finish my life? I said, get away from here. What you talk? Why would I want to do that? I think it's quite a good state. Is he? So, opinions. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I could say something, it would be stop identifying. yourself as this or that. Perceive, but don't identify. Just try it and see how it feels. And you probably realise that you've been wasting a lot of energy identifying where you don't need to identify. Simply perceive. Even in deep, intimate relationships, it happens that as you come more deeply into the Self, your identity is not so rigid it's really beautiful, but sometimes we want that touch of attachment and that neediness, you see, and it is a kind of poison, but a poison we must all taste a little bit. Not everybody tastes it. Some don't need to. They've already transcended that already. They don't need to go over it again. What you have passed becomes already conquered ground. You don't have to go over this ground again. Hmm. Okay. Tat, tat, tat. Hmm. I wanted to say earlier to welcome all those who are joining us via broadcasting in order to share uh, real time with us here in, in Lucknow. And because even our meetings here, we are trying to avoid the eat by starting a bit early. There are many places in Europe, this is far too early for them. Still some are getting up, alarm clocks and lots of black coffee, <laughs> to get up to kind of <laughs> much sticks in the eyes <laughs> to watch. Well, we are effortlessly enjoying the and um, so just to say welcome to all of those. Anyway, they can watch later when they get up. But some they want to be in the moment, you know, to be in the moment as we are here. And I appreciate this also. And so big welcome to you and I love you so much and uh, thank you everyone. Thank you. We are always grateful and ever grateful for sitting so much in the Master's presence. To thank all who welcome us with such open arms to be here. Thank you, Bharat, for inviting me to come, Vandita Bhavani. <coughs> I 
again, let me just invite you to leave everything. This most profound and most beautiful and most effective invitation to just leave everything for a moment. Leave everything, abandon everything for a moment. Not because it's evil or bad, but simply because you can for a moment. Leave everything. Every notion you have, every idea you have about yourself and life, from any realm of time, from past to future or even present, just simply leave uh, looking after the world for a moment and the world of your own private identity and its world. And immediately you are in the discovery of what is effortlessly present. It's not hidden on the layers and layers and layers and deep, 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 deep. No, it is right here. It has no distance, it has no depth, in fact. And yet it encompasses all creation of all the worlds, this consciousness. But right now, don't hold on to any pictures that may arise in it or any thought. Let them float by themselves without your involvement and stay only in the silence of being. This is your natural state. There is nothing to be afraid of. There is nothing to do or undo. Nothing to change. Nothing to become. Nothing to heal. Nothing to transform. Just right where you are. Be in that roomless room of the Self, a room without walls, without signs, without preference, without judgment. There is no need to imagine this, in fact. It is already as it is. There are no pictures to give you, no shapes, there are no concepts to impart to you. Empty beyond the concept of emptiness. You don't need to imagine. Imagine is going too far. It is already here. It is. It is. Uh, this is more immediate than immediacy. It is here. Your pictureless being, without association. So it is not the image that you may see in your mind. Because any image you see is arising in it. So images are arising in the imageless. Even the image of yourself is momentary. You are not imagining this. You are simply being aware of. It has no religion. It has no opinions. And yet it gives life to life. It is the silence inside silence itself, indescribable.
Every time we create an image of ourself, we create and imagine a limitation where there is not one. Just out of habit. This consciousness is the light itself, the light of life. It is what illumines the world. It is the world also, and the perceiver of it. It is the perception, the vibration of knowing. Perceiving being. Recognizing it releases the seeds of grace. Even the very cells in the body are singing with joy. Mind is weightless, timeless. As you move about, as we leave this room today, hmm? Pay attention to that inner being. It does not get changed by whether the body goes outside or inside anywhere. It is constant. It does not fluctuate. But whatever fluctuates is perceived in it. Be one with that. Should we close with some music? Papaji likes music. Eh? Who's coming? छुपालो यूँद में प्यार मेरा के जैसे मंदिर में लो दिए कि छुपालो यूँद में प्यार मेरा के जैसे मंदिर में लो 
देखे तुम अपने चरणों में रख लो मुझको तुम्हारे चरणों की धूल हूँ मैं मैं सर झुकाए खड़ी हूँ प्रीतम मैं सर झुकाए खड़ी हूँ प्रीतम के जैसे मंदिर में लो दिए की छुपा लो यू दिल में प्यार मेरा के सच है जीना है पाप तुम बिन ये पाप मैंने किया है अब तक मगर है मन में छवि तुम्हारी मगर है मन में छवि तुम्हारी के जैसे मंदिर में लो दिए कि छुपा लो यू दिल में प्यार मेरा के आग बिर की मत लगाना के चल ये राख माथे पे मैंने रख ली के जैसे मंदिर में लो दिए छुपा लो यू दिल में प्यार मेरा के जैसे मंदिर में लो Join this satsang is here, you know, in uh, satsang bhavan. Where it is easy to see all your faces and so close, even at the back, I can see you so easily. And in the intimacy of this great place. I can have this glimpse <clears throat> of why, when those days I was also sitting at Papaji's feet, and sometimes you know you sit behind some wide shoulders <laughs> because you are not in the mood to be seen today, and just your ears are kind of sticking out, listening to everything, and peeping up sometimes. But still, how visible each one is in the Master's eyes and art. And why it was such a, a naked place and is for those who wish to be seen and those who don't.
Everyone is most welcome to stay here in Papaji Satsang Bhavan. The next satsang is at 3 o'clock and uh, we'll close just for a short time at about 2 o'clock. And to let you know that lunch is available upstairs and you can inquire at the desk if you'd like to stay here for lunch. Thank you. Very good.
Yeah. <laughs> 